Good morning. Our opening song is Sing a New Song. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from the mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Shout with gladness, dance for joy. Oh, come before the Lord. And play for him on glad tambourine, and let your trumpet sound. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, sing alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us praise God today, giving our Lord and King and Judge the worship he deserves from his creatures. Let us acknowledge our sins before him, that he may cleanse us of them, and make us worthy to dwell in his presence. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give Lord God and the King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seen to have welcomed the right hand of the Father. Have mercy for you. Glory to God, glory to God, glory 
to God. I want peace from you, peace to keep on And let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. 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 
canst not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this, and they followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages to buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. And they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, my brothers and sisters, up until now, the last couple, two, three weeks, we've been hearing Jesus' parables, him teaching us through the stories that he loved to tell. And now we see him performing miracles again. More about that later. I'll begin by saying, first of all, that there really are very few episodes in Jesus' life on earth here that are recorded in all four Gospels. Uh, obviously, the passion, death, and resurrection, that being the central gospel message, you would expect that. But there's other things that kind of surprise you. Uh, for example, only Matthew and Luke talk about Jesus' birth, and only Luke talks about the Annunciation. Only Matthew talks about the Epiphany, and only Luke talks about the Presentation. The Transfiguration, well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but not John. Jesus' baptism, again, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but not John. So what are the episodes that are contained in all four Gospels? One of them, believe it or not, is Jesus having to face the charge that he's using the power of Satan to work his miracles, that he's basically using black magic, that he's nothing more than a warlock. Uh, more about that later. But one of the other ones is the Gospel we hear today, Jesus multiplying loaves and fishes. My goodness. Why would that be contained in all four Gospels? Well, I think, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke you'd expect, but John adds it to, and he also makes it the centerpiece, or rather the beginning piece, of the sixth chapter of John, in which he talks about the bread of life, making this a Eucharistic thing. Let's talk more about that. You know, my brothers and sisters, the miracles of Christ were very important to his ministry. Like, say, for example, I mean, I could say I am the bread of life, talking about me myself, and you'd say he's some kind of a kook. In fact, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, the 5,000 people he miraculously fed said, this guy's a kook, and they walked away from him. But when he turned around and saw the apostles, and they had that same look of, Lord, we don't believe what you just said on their faces, uh, he asked them, are you going to leave me too? And Peter, speaking up for the rest, as he always did, basically put it this way. I'm paraphrasing, but to give you the power of it. Well, Lord, you know, what you said really is hard to understand. But, um, hey, we just saw you walk on water. We just saw you multiply loaves and fishes. Maybe you really are the bread of life. So we're going we're gonna to trust you on this one. But dang, you know, uh, this is not an easy one to understand or follow or believe. That's pretty much it, that Jesus' words were punctuated by his actions. Anybody can say wild and crazy things. I am the good shepherd. I am the vine. I am the resurrection and the life. 
But then you actually raise somebody from the dead. Oh, my goodness, maybe you are the resurrection and the life. Because I sure as heck can't do that. Nobody can do that. But Jesus Christ did that kind of stuff. And in the first generations of the church, as we as recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, the apostles did the same thing. When they went out preaching the power of Christ, the people saw the power of Christ. The apostles also could give sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf and to make the cripples walk again and even raise the dead. My goodness, you know. So the miracles are a big, big part of it. And yet we find in the 19th century, the German scripture scholars and the people of the so-called Enlightenment just poo-pooed the whole thing. They said, people can't believe this. This is not comprehensible to us. Therefore, these things just didn't happen. They must be metaphors. Or there must be some kind of naturalistic explanation for the feats that Jesus did. And they tried to come up with explanations. Uh, Rousseau was great. He's the guy that, no, Voltaire, I think, was the one who said that Jesus didn't really walk on water. He just had, knew where the stones were right below the surface of the lake so he could actually seem to be walking. And I think it was Rousseau that said when it came to multiplying loaves and fishes, Jesus didn't really do that. What he did instead was that some of the people had brought a brown bag lunch and other people didn't. He talked the ones that brought the brown bag lunch to share with the ones that didn't. Now, that probably would have taken a more miraculous power than even Jesus had to make that happen. Um, and let's face it, it is often more difficult to convince selfish people to be generous than it is just to multiply loaves and fishes if you are the Lord. But that's not how these things worked. Jesus actually multiplied loaves and fishes. We understand that Jesus performed three kinds of miracles, that all the miracles he performed were for three different purposes. The first purpose was to illustrate that he was the Messiah. Now understand the word Messiah is the Hebrew word for the Greek word Christ, which is for the English word anointed. So if you live in the time of King David and ask somebody, where's the anointed? They'd say, well, there he is, King David. He's the anointed one because that's how he got to be king, being anointed by the prophet Samuel. Same thing for Solomon, same thing for Saul, same thing for all the kings of Israel. The king was the Christ. He was the Messiah. But they knew there was a, a, a ultimate Messiah coming, uh, the Savior, and when he came, he would basically reduplicate the great deeds of the prophets of old, but on a much grander scale. The blind would see, the cripples would walk, the multitudes would be fed, the poor would have the good news preached to them. And that's exactly when Jesus did these things, he was trying to teach us he is the Messiah. Remember when John the Baptist was cooling his heels in that in Herod's prison, and he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one, are you the Messiah? And when they did, Jesus didn't say yes. He didn't say no. Instead, he said, just go tell John what you see. Aren't the blind seeing and the deaf hearing and the cripples walking? Don't the poor have the good news preached to them? Well, yeah, okay, there's your answer. I'm doing all the things that the Messiah was expected to do, so therefore, you know, draw your own conclusions. There's another kind of miracle that shows that Jesus is something more than a Messiah, because the Messiah, after all, was just a man, a human being. Jesus was a lot more than just human, although he was human. He was also God. He was divine. And there's certain things that only God can do. Raise the dead? Yep. Walk on water? Yep. Only God can do these things. And then when Jesus, they see him walking on the water, they're freaking out because they figure he must be a ghost. He must have died, and, you know, he's, he's haunting us now. And Jesus said, no, it's I. Don't be afraid. Say, now, wait a minute, only God can walk on water, and he's not a ghost, and he's walking on water. Hmm. Well, again, draw your conclusions. Jesus does these things to show us that he is God. And there's another third category of miracle where he works a, basically a messianic miracle to teach us something about the sacraments. Like, for example, when, you know, that he was preaching at St. Peter's house that one time, and they brought in this guy who was apparently a quadriplegic, they brought him in on a litter. He had four friends carrying him, one on each corner. They couldn't get in the house because there were too many people and they wouldn't make a room for him. So they actually climbed up on the roof of St. Peter's house and busted a hole in the ceiling and lowered this guy down. I just can't imagine Peter standing for that, but there you go. Uh, they lowered him down. 
And we have many episodes of Jesus healing people, but we have no episodes, specific episodes, of Jesus not healing somebody. This is as close as we get. He looked at the man and saw, obviously, he's a quadriplegic, wants to be able to walk again, but he had a bigger problem. Jesus could see this, we can't. The bigger problem was his sins. And so he told the man, your sins are forgiven. Gave him that kind of a healing, much better than a physical one, actually. And the people, of course, are like, wait a minute, who does this guy think he is? Only God can forgive sins. Well, only God can walk on water, too, and he just did that, you know. And so he realized in their objections, he said, so that you may know the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. He tells the paralytic, get up, pick up your mat and walk, and he does. My goodness. He's teaching us something about the sacrament of confession. That Jesus, who has the power to forgive sins, is now giving that power to the church. And so it is. But this miracle today, the multiplication of loaves, obviously is a miracle to punctuate the Eucharist. Because that's exactly what St. John does when he tells the story. The people, having been fed miraculously with the loaves and fishes, they come back to Jesus for more. And he says, well, you shouldn't be looking for perishable food. You should be looking for the kind of food that lasts forever, the food that I will give you. And they said, well, great, <laughs> bring it on. He says, me, I am the bread of life. Now, the people objected that, you know, that it's interesting that Jesus' miracles were so well established that even his enemies had to admit he was doing them. They instead accused him of using the power of Satan to use them, but he, they could not deny he was working the miracle. And even despite that, when he tells them, I am the bread of life, they go, whoa, 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 this is crazy talk. We're not listening to this. And they left him. And they left the apostles alone with him. And again, they said, well, Lord, you know, this is a tough one. But we're going to believe you because you can. You raise the dead. You walk on water. You give sight back to the blind. Yeah, maybe you really are the bread of life. That's exactly, my brothers and sisters, the inference we draw from Jesus' multiplication of the loaves. The key word here is multiplication. Because notice, every time this story is told, and it's told twice in some Gospels, there's one detail that is never left out, that Jesus insisted, insisted, that all the leftovers be gathered up. Nothing goes to waste. And we understand this has a great powerful symbolism. That would be, again, Jesus Christ wasn't here just to give us a kind of bread that we eat and, you know, like, like focaccia bread or, you know, sourdough or whatever, you know. Uh, he give us a real bread that we'd eat and we'd live forever. This is the bread, of course, of the Eucharist. And it's something that he would always miraculously supply. 2,000 years later, and we still haven't run out. 2,000 years later, we're still eating the leftovers, if you will, from the Last Supper. That the very thing that Jesus fed the apostles with then, we're still eating today through the miraculous power of Christ. A miracle will happen in just a few minutes here on this altar. It won't be the, some blind person seeing or some dead person raised back to life. It'll be something even greater. That bread will become Jesus' body and wine becomes his blood. In a way, my brothers and sisters, that Christ miraculously feeds his people. I've actually witnessed miracles myself, people miraculously healed of deadly diseases. You know, there's no other explanation than some kind of miracle. But those are secondary contrasted with this. Because the people who get those miracles, if they're not dead already, they'll die again eventually. It does happen. This is something that goes on and on and on. As long as the church needs the Eucharist, it will be there for us. You can get preaching at other religions, other denominations. You can get great music at other denominations. That's wonderful. But you can't get the blessed sacrament. You cannot get Jesus' body and blood. Only here. And Jesus thought that was so important that when he talked about himself as the vine, he did it as a way of saying, but you're my branches. And connected to me, and I feed you, you bear fruit and you will live cut off from me, you shrivel up and die. My brothers and sisters, it's just the way it is. As long as the church needs the Eucharist, it will be there for us. The question is, will, be, will we be there for it? Jesus Christ invites us to come and share his body and blood. 
And my brothers and sisters, the power that it gives is overwhelming for those who believe. It's a difficult thing to believe, but it's there for us, Christ giving it to us. And 2,000 years later, it's still there. And thousands of years from now, it will still be there. And I thank you for listening. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Hear us, O Lord, as we cry out to you once again, confident in your, prow your power and will to save us and to give us the good things of your kingdom. For the Holy Catholic Church, that God will cleanse her from all sin, save her from the fires of hell, and strengthen and purify her shepherds to teach, govern, and sanctify his people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as Christ first miraculously fed the multitudes with the loaves and fishes, he may now feed us even more miraculously with the heavenly bread of the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we continue to be fed on what is left over from the Last Supper, we will receive the bread of life with the faith that is Christ's true body and with gratitude for so great a gift. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from poverty and want, violence and injustice, persecution and oppression, ignorance and fear, and that God will bring an end to the Wuhan flu and its devastation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls of our beloved dead, especially those who did die defending us and our nation, that they will find peace in the arms of their Savior in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, Heavenly Father, May this Eucharist which we offer give you the worship you deserve and make our participation in this Eucharist fruitful by the faithful and good reception of your body and blood. We ask this in Jesus' name, Messiah, King, and Lord forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The me history of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Angela Marisi, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <clears throat> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, if not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away my sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be
without money, without price, why should you pay the price except for the Lord? Let all who seek, let them come to the water. And let all who have nothing, let them come to the Lord. Without money, without strife, why should you spend your life except for the Lord? And let all who toil, let them come to the water. And let all who are weary, let them come to the Lord. Without rest, how can your soul find rest except for the Lord? And let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Got a few notices. Don't forget to stop by the lunchroom, get your script and gift cards after <coughs> Mass today. Again, we have adoration on Tuesday from 8.30 to 7 in the evening with benediction and devotions at 7. Uh, this afternoon, we have the Mass for God the Father at 1.30. You're certainly welcome to come to that. Uh, also, we send out notices to rejoin the 150 Club or to join if you've never joined before. It's a fundraising thing, but it's also a nice social thing. We have that big dinner dance at the end of the year and the mini raffles in between. It's just a great organization. Please think about joining. This coming first is Friday is First Friday, and so we'll have our monthly uh, holy hour for the sanctification of the parish from 7 to 8 in the uh, evening and also here in church. And also this coming Thursday is the Feast of the Transfiguration. So all you old trans people, you can come to Mass that morning. We might have a little something afterwards in the lunchroom, a little get-together, socially distant, of course. The Lord be with you. And with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing is We Will Rise Again. Like a shepherd, I will feed you. I will gather you with care. I will lead you and hold you close to my heart. We will run and not grow weary. 
For our God will be our strength, and we will fly like the eagle. We will rise again. We 